The Sphinx in Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the coolest boss designs, and it's actually something that you unlock through some special means. However, there are 10 trials that you need to complete before getting the final reward, and every single trial you complete will give you progressively better and better rewards, including tons of gold, some interesting items, as well as a bunch of achievements in there that will help a ton if you want to go for full 100% completion. So today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide how to complete this in the easiest way, as well as some tips along the way to just make things a lot better. But to find the Sphinx, there are two locations that we have to visit, and fortunately enough, both of them are reachable from the checkpoint Rest Town. So the first one is going to be up north of it, we're gonna have to pass through the ancient battleground, go through the castle, until we reach some of these caverns, and then use them to get all the way to the mountain peak in a place called the Mountain Shrine. So simply head over to the north side exit of the town and there's going to be an adjacent route right here that brings you a bit downwards and eventually all the way to the ancient battleground. Now once you reach here there's going to be a boss, simply ignore it and keep it to the left side for now. From here simply climb the hills until you reach the nearby castle entrance and from that point on keep it to the left side and make your way through the tower all the way at the top. Here you will find another ladder which will bring you at the top of these walls. Now if for some reason this is not available to you, what you can do is to go alongside these walls, climb them up and then eventually make your way at the top of these cliffs which is going to help you descend back into the main area. And from this point on, simply climb the final set of stairs, go past this wall onto the other side, and from here you just have to navigate two sets of caverns that will bring you eventually to the mountain top. You can't really miss it as the path is pretty linear from this point on. And once you are at the top, you will encounter the Sphinx for the first time and you can start progressing through its riddles. So there are five of them in here, beginning with the Riddle of Eyes. This is actually the easiest. Once you progress through the dialogue, all you have to do is to go right here in this entrance to a pathway on to the right side. And there are going to be a bunch of enemies at the top of this flight of stairs, but once you defeat them, just head over back and take a look at the archway at the top of that entrance. Here you will find a chest containing a file and this is exactly the item that you have to bring back to the Sphinx boss. Once you're here, simply give it in and this is then going to successfully finish the first trial and open the first treasure box. And inside of it, we actually get a wake stone, so that comes in handy, but there are much better rewards coming in a bit. Now the second trial is the trial of madness and what the Sphinx wants to do is to bring a character that's very important to you. Now there are some other options from some of the side missions but for now you can just bring in your main pawn right here using R2 and then drop it right here on the pedestal. Once you speak with the Sphinx and give in your answer she's going to be satisfied with the answer and this is going to pretty much finish the riddle. As well as the second box which is going to give you a port crystal keep this at hand as we're gonna use it to duplicate it and basically get it. It's a very awesome item and one of the most useful in the entire game. Now before we move on, I recommend completing the Riddle of Conviction next as it's very fast, so all you have to do is present an item to the Sphinx. Don't worry, they will not take it, instead it's actually going to get duplicate it. So I highly encourage you to use any item that's extremely valuable. I definitely suggest going for the port crystals since these are by far the most valuable and also the most difficult to come by by default. So if you have the one from the previous chest you just did, you're going to have this immediately duplicated. So simply head over to the chest that just opened and inside you will find a second port crystal. And now if you pay attention to your inventory, you will see that you actually have two of them. Quick tip over here, definitely place down one of these port crystals right in front of the shrine so that we can always teleport here very quickly instead of taking the very long route to this area. And we're gonna need that because the next two trials are going to bring us out in the open world. So for the trial of wisdom, what we have to do is to bring back to the Sphinx a Sphinx parent, Sphinx mother or Sphinx father, it doesn't really matter. All of these can be recruited from a special rift stone, again very close to the checkpoint town. So what you have to do is to simply head over to this side of the road right here called Rift Stone of Fellowship. It's going to be inside this tower, but there are going to be some enemies that you have to defeat. 
Once inside, simply activate the Rift Stone and you should already see a bunch of Sphinx fathers or, well, Sphinx parents in here that you can recruit right away. Doesn't matter which one of these it is, just get them. Any of them can work just fine. And if you want to be completely sure, you can go ahead and recruit a couple of them. With these two in your party, you can just head over back to the Mountain Shrine and present either of the parents to the main Sphinx. And once you do that, the trial will be completed. And this also opens up the next chest, which contains 1200 Rift Points for you to spend on the Rift Stone if you want to. Now, if you want to save a bit more time and also a bunch of fairy stones, I recommend actually hearing both the Trial of Wisdom and the one of Rumination and completing them both at the same time, since both of them bring you out in the open world. So for the first one, I already told you how to complete it. Let's go over the one of Rumination. This might be the most complicated because you pretty much have to backtrack and remember where was the first place where you encountered your first Seeker token in this entire playthrough. So you have to make a mental note of the first Seeker token that you ever find. In my case, it was right here just outside of the second exit of the Trevor Mine, since this was one of the first, um, well, mission areas that you get to do right up north of Wernworth. So luckily, I just had to climb down this exit and right here by the side of this wall, I found a finder's token which is the exact same place i found the seeker token at the start of the game but this time around is going to be called finder's token and that's how you know you're actually doing it right and once you do that you can just head over back to the sphinx present this as well and once you do that the trial is pretty much finished and this also opens up that fifth chest right here which you can go ahead open up and this is going to give you three fairy stones which are going to be very helpful especially since you might have consumed quite a few of them along the way once you're done with this the sphinx takes off also takes the big chest with it and it's going to move to its second and final location and that location is going to be right here at the frontier shrine which is just a bit west from the checkpoint rest town and actually a lot easier to reach than the previous one but before you head over back to the town, absolutely make sure you also get back your port crystal from the shrine. Don't leave it over there as you're not going to have any use for it in this area any longer. Once you're back in town, maybe do a quick rest at the inn. But once you're done with that, simply exit via the north side and then just go down right here to the right. There's going to be this dried river section and this will bring you underneath the bridge. From here, simply follow the route. You can't mess this up, but be careful because you do have to jump up through some of these cliffs and go to the upper platforms until you eventually reach this sort of middle section with a bunch of ruins. So in this case, you're going to pay attention to this middle junction with one of these collapsed pillars that covers this area that brings you to the final shrine location. So simply jump over it or use any of your abilities to go to the other side. And from this point on, you're pretty much set for the final destination. Which brings us to the final set of five trials slash riddles that we have to complete, which are going to be slightly more challenging than the previous five. But there's one thing you have to do first, and that is to collect your sixth reward, which is going to be 100,000 gold. So this is something that opens immediately once you enter this location and find the Sphinx here. This is just given to you automatically without doing anything. And this will help a ton for the plans ahead. Now, some of these riddles might come in different orders as it seems to be a bit randomized, but the next one I got was the riddle of recollection. In this one, to the left, I had to bring back to the Sphinx some of these stone statues corresponding to the number of trials that I got right up until that point. So the best way to verify this is simply take a look at the number of chests that you have opened in both of the trials until now. So in the case of the first shrine location, we opened up all of the five chests and in the second one, we only opened one. So that means six of them in total. If this comes for you at a later stage, you will just have to pay attention to the number of those chests that you opened in total until that point. So with six of these stone statues back at the Sphinx, that was the correct answer for me. So in this case, the trial was completed and it gave me another chest, which contained this unmaking arrow. Keep a mental note of this one as we're gonna use it in the final boss encounter. Don't use it on anything else, but there are some copies of it that you can get from other locations. However, it's very difficult, so definitely just keep it in your inventory for now. 
Now for my eighth riddle, I had the riddle of differentiation, which essentially has you go out in the world and bring back an NPC that looks exactly like the one that the Sphinx shows you. So luckily, the choice is only between two brothers. In this case, it's Virgil or Dante. So both of them are actually back at the checkpoint rest town. But each of them has a different hairstyle, so pay absolute attention to the hairstyle of the NPC that is featured over here by the wing. If it's the one with the curly hair, that's going to be Virgil. If it's the one with the straight hair, it's going to be Dante. So for example, Dante is the one that you find in the checkpoint rest town. He's usually going to walk there by the main road in the day. So if you have this one presented to you, go ahead, pick him up and then use the Riftstone to go to the other side. However, for me, it was Virgil that I had to bring back. So you will actually find him pretty much at the entrance into Batal right here into the main camp. So go past the gates and you will usually find him in the midday pretty much roaming around. So grab him, use the fairy stone, go back to the Sphinx, present him and he's going to do the comparison and if it fits you're going to finish the trial and also open up the next chest. And this is going to give you a pretty interesting daydream, well I guess item slash weapon for the trickster but in my case I did not use it. It does seem to have some pretty nice damage on it however. Now if you somehow messed up and presented the wrong brother or just messed up any of the other previous trials usually what you can do is to just completely close off the application especially in the middles of dialogues or cutscenes as this will bring you to the point right before that if the game didn't manage to overwrite your save. That's why I recommended also making periodic saves to the main inn back in town. Now the next one is the riddle of contest, unfortunately my videos got corrupted so I don't have footage of that any longer, however it's actually pretty simple and it's just going to spawn an enemy by the side of the boss right here, but you will have to fight that enemy with a ring that pretty much reduces all of your damage to zero. So there's two things you can do, either use your party mates to have damage dealt to that enemy, or even better yet, just grab them the normal way and then throw them right here down this cliff. This is going to immediately destroy them and you can just finish that quest right away. And once you finish that riddle, you're going to get the next item, which is going to be a Ring of Ambition. And finally, the last riddle I got was the one of Futility. In this one, I had to bring a vase completely unharmed all the way back to Bak Batal, which is actually very far away from here. However, a much easier way to complete this is by simply bringing the NPC to the vase instead of the vase to the NPC. So in this case, you're going to need to head over to Bak Batal and specifically this area right here called the Mural Byway. So simply head over to Bak Batal and here are a few tips that I have for you just for the final section. So first of all, you can buy extra fairy stones in case you don't have any left from Isaac's Wares right here by the main road. They cost about 10 grand each, so be careful but you should have money from the previous chest. Second of all, change your vocation to the archer. It's going to be important for the final stage if you want to one-shot the boss as you're going to use that arrow that we just got from its previous chest. And the third of all, also make absolutely sure that you rest at the nearby inn. For some reason, mine was almost 10 grand for the night. Not sure why, but um, it's definitely going to be useful as you now have a permanent save file you can go back to in case something goes horribly wrong. So from here, simply head over to the byway where Moritz will greet you if you go here for the first time. So simply grab him and then use a fairy stone to travel back to the Sphinx. Once you do that and get close to the vase, this is going to play a quick cutscene. This is then going to complete that trial. And once you talk to the Sphinx, this is going to end it and open up the final 10th chest, as well as giving you the full marks achievement. And inside of it, you're also going to get an eternal bond ring. So this is actually something that you should keep for a very important NPC. It's not just the main pawn you can give this to, so just keep it for now in your inventory. But from this point on, if you truly want to open the big chest at the end, you're going to have to defeat the boss. And you can manually fight it, which might or might not fail, as eventually it will just fly away. But if you don't have the damage for that, what you can use is simply go ahead and equip the unmaking arrow that you got from one of its previous chests. And I tried shooting it in the face for some reason that failed and the boss survived and still ran away. So it seems that the only way you can pull this off is by shooting it in one of its wings. So again, if you have trouble with that, you can just go back at the last in rest that we just used to save and just repeat the whole process again. 
And once you do that, this is going to completely take down the boss. There's going to be a special cutscene at the end, which is also going to drop that key you need for the big chest and multiple of these bags with 2,000 gold each. That's an easy 10k plus right there. And once you go ahead and open that chest, inside you will get the Eternal Wake Stone. And this is actually going to be very important as it can restore back to life any fallen NPC or character in your vicinity. So definitely something to keep at an important moment later on in the game or maybe if you are already there. But that is pretty much it with the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.